I had walked home alone that day, and my hands were sticky from oranges I'd stolen and eaten on the way. I came up the cement steps and unlocked the paint chip door. I just tossed my bag down when I heard my godmother, Elena's voice. Have you been driving her? I will not allow you to do that. I'll take her away from here before I'll let you do that. I could feel heat in my cheeks and my chest was tight. I stared at her and she stared back at me, resolute. No, 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 I didn't. I was lying. Even after weeks of practice, it still did not come naturally. The person I was driving was my god sister, Alicia. We'd grown closer that year, sharing a tiny bedroom in a hot La Mesa apartment. Our families had hit some hard times with my dad unemployed and Elena newly divorced. So our parents decided to combine resources and move us all in together. It wasn't good for me. Back in Colorado, I had been a sophomore, blossoming into a content little theater geek. I'd also been receiving thrilling boob touches from my cello playing boyfriend. <laughs> Still, I could sense the anxiety that followed my parents around like a saggy birthday balloon. I wasn't so blinded by teenage self-absorption that I couldn't attempt to accept their decision. I realize now just how desperate they were. We tried to make a big deal about the tepid pool in front of the dark wood paneled cramped apartment. We can hang out here and stay cool. Yeah, it'll be really nice. Alicia and I were slightly intimidated by each other. She was dyslexic and so mostly not interested in school, but respected my comparative studiousness. I'd only recently had my first kiss via the boob toucher and was fascinated by high school romance. Alicia went through boyfriends like Kleenex and I, I admired how quickly she would write herself after a breakup. One day, I was in our room studying when I heard soft voices in our armpit-sized kitchen. I sidled up to the door and heard my mom coming through, but muted. What are you going to do? Elena replied. I'm not letting her walk home from school anymore. I'll bring her back to work with me every day if I have to. Don't you think that will just make her want to see her more? I don't know. I just, I, I can't let her think it's okay. What? Her? Maybe that's why I hadn't heard a romance bulletin for a while. Well, I don't think she's really gay. I think she's just messing around. That's not an option. Not if she's living with me. This was a side of my godmother I'd hoped wasn't real. I knew Elena went to a conservative church, a church which had strongly advised against her divorce. But now a curtain had been pulled back, and I was certain there was a homophobic Wizard of Oz operating part of my godmother's mind. <laughs> but... She babysat me as a child. She was the one who taught me how to cook Mexican rice correctly. She sang us gospel songs at Christmas. She told me Wuthering Heights from memory. She had been my mother's best friend since middle school. I love her. My parents were liberal types, and I'd never heard them say anything really negative about homosexuality. Being gay seemed urbane and groovy to me. I was shocked to hear my semi-progressive mother tacitly accept what Elena was saying. I'd been studying civil rights in my first real US history class. This was not just. Now, fueled with the angst of a semi-privileged youth who didn't have many friends yet, but did have lots of time, I sat in our room and waited for Alicia to come home. She was with her church youth group, one of the few remnants of her pre la Mesa life that she still took part in regularly. As soon as she got home, I heard frantic, muffled whispering between her and her mother. Did you think I was stupid? Of course they tell me. The whole church knows why she was kicked out. <laughs> You're not going to whatever me when I send you to some church in Iowa, and you know I can. <laughs> oh, please, you don't love her. You're not even 16. Fast steps approached, and I backed up just in time to not get my nose whacked as Alicia threw open the door and flew onto the bed, chest heaving. I don't care what she says. I sat down carefully. I was listening. Your mom is messed up. <laughs> Neither of us has a car, and she got kicked out of youth group. We don't go to the same school. How am I going to see her? Well, you know, my dad has been saying I should practice driving to school some of the time. Does your mom know we have half days on Wednesdays? 
No, she doesn't. Neither of us had ever been to Lake Murray Park. The day before, we'd looked it up on MapQuest <laughs> and carefully calculated the amount of time we'd have to get there and come back before anyone noticed. We knew our parents wouldn't come here. This was a part of the new neighborhood they didn't have time to discover. I jerked the grungy Subaru into the old dirt parking lot by the baseball fields. Alicia strained, looking. Neither of us had cell phones, but she'd been assured by a friend that Alex had received her correspondence. <laughs> we kept scanning. Then we saw her, waiting. Her bulky jacket silhouetted in the afternoon sun. Cattail fluff drifted in the air. Her messy ponytail strands stuck to the sweat on her neck. I barely parked it when Alicia leapt out of the car. Alex opened her arms to receive the slam of Alicia's body. They awkwardly pulled apart and shuffled their converse in the dust. I tried to stand apart to give them some space, but I couldn't bring myself to go far enough away that I couldn't see them. <laughs> I wanted evidence that it had been worth it. Just how bad did they want to see each other? Perform your love, please. Then Alicia turned to Alex and asked, will you give me a piggyback ride? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so I watched them, Alex lugging Alicia, Alis Alicia gripping Alex weakly with her knees, her butt sagging down, the shadow of their bodies making a sort of deformed P shape. <laughs> they kissed chastely, murmured to each other. It was worth it. I kept pushing my anxiety away for maybe two hours, but by the time 3 p.m. rolled around, I was almost physically shaking. I waved at them, and they leaned in closer, then broke apart. We waved as we drove off, and Alex nodded back at us, hands in her pockets. We kept up the ruse for the next four weeks. I started bringing books so I could pretend to study instead of just pace nervously <laughs> while they lay hidden amongst the cattails. I'd walk over loudly around 3 p.m. and call out, and they'd pop up red-cheeked and rumpled. <laughs> Until the Thursday I came to the apartment. I was still rubbing the dust that I'd caught on my orange juice sticky hands. Alicia had been picked up by one of the church parents that day. And Elena was waiting for me. I still don't know what, pick, what, t what tipped her off. No, 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 I didn't! Finally she said, I hope you're telling the truth. Because you need to know, this is not your business. I will do whatever I need to do to protect my daughter. She released me from her gaze and left the house. I leaned my whole body against the wall and tried to quiet the buzzing in my temple. Will Elena stop talking to me forever if she finds out for sure? Will I get to be friends with Alicia? Will my mom be mad at me for sticking myself in the middle of this? Why aren't my parents saying anything? Will Alicia and Alex be depressed forever if I stop driving them? Will I be able to stand myself if I stop? Will my whole family be mad at me? Do Alicia and Alex love each other enough for me to deal with my whole family being mad at me? I couldn't stop spinning. I was sitting on the linoleum floor of the kitchen, zoned out looking at my purple toe socks when Alicia finally came home. What is it? I just, I can't. Your mom, your mom talked to me today. She asked me if I'd been driving you to see Alex. Her eyes widened. I didn't tell her anything. I said I didn't know what she was talking about, but Alicia, I can't have your mom hate me. I can't, I can't drive you anymore. She didn't say anything. She just put her bag down and walked to the tiny porch overlooking the parking lot closing the glass door behind her. My eyes started stinging, but I squeezed them shut. I felt like I'd be some phony asshole if I let myself cry. I wasn't being blocked from seeing someone I loved. At least I wouldn't try to get her to feel sorry for me. After a half hour, I walked softly to the door and knocked, holding a glass of ice water and some tissues. She opened the door and took them. I get it, she said, and closed the door. I felt gutless, realizing I was not, in fact, the flying eagle of justice I'd hoped I was. I was the mouse in its claw, looking down. For 12 years, no one mentioned it, 
not Alicia, not Elena, not my parents, not me. It was like some lost dream in the group's consciousness. It wasn't until Alicia had a baby last year that I thought of it at all. The father didn't seem to be a steady guy, and most of us were worried. But not her mom. Elena told me over the phone, it doesn't matter if the dad stays around or not. We'll love this baby. I was so happy to hear her say that and also confused. Why is it so easy for her to accept this baby, but not accept that relationship all those years ago? There was so much more to the story than I knew. She was, she was dealing with shit I really did not get. But not everything was dangerous. Would our relationship have come out the other side if I told her? I don't know. But I wish I'd tried. Phoenix Flanders, ladies and gentlemen.